Welcome to my FJ rebuild project. Pick this thing up with 290k miles and a snake's skin in the bumper. <laughs> the guy I bought it from said he thinks a snake is there because it was trying to eat the mice that live in the FJ. So that was funny. He also told me to pressure wash the outside and the inside for me as a nice favor before I picked it up. So you'll see more about that later. So if you're wondering if you can tow anything with first gen Tundra, that's a year 2000 four x four. Can you tow another vehicle and the trailer? Yes, you can. Did I go over the weight limit? Not sure, probably close with this FJ and the uh, big steel trailer from U-Haul. Cost me about $90 with some added insurance to rent that trailer, easy peasy and my truck is super rusty, it has a new frame on it, but everything else is super rusty, so I made it. I was praying the whole time. Now, this is actually in two times speed. You can see how slowly I was backing up. <laughs> I wanted to avoid that uh, cable box that's there on the right, and I'd pull into this narrow gap between some trees and the yard. So I could get this thing out of the way. I would love to have it in the driveway, but the wife said I had to put it on the side of the house while I'm working on it. And this t may take months actually to finish this up. Did you see that other Tundra with the uh, same exact trailer, U-Haul, going by? Nice. So at this point, you use a come along to kind of pull it off of the trailer. And it's heavy and it doesn't run, so I had no choice. The engine is actually supposedly turns over but the guy said that it overheated. So now I'm just gonna do a walk around and kind of show the damage. It did have two other minor accidents on the title that showed, and one of them is this front. Guy said he got hit behind, and the FJ rolled forward and went to the back of a trailer hitch of another truck. So the, the um, hood there looks like it's not quite lining up, but actually he just had a piece of rubber in there to stop it from going down all the way so he could open and close it easily. Um, the front bumper is pretty smashed up. Either I'll get an aftermarket bumper or replace that. Uh, one from the junkyard or new. A little bit of rust spots up here in the front. Probably slap some primer on there after sanding them down a little bit. This is going to take a while. Uh, door's a little crunched. Not bad though. I can work those out. Tires, I think it can last a little while. Not much. Gas cap? Oh. What's going on here? Water bottle shoved in. Let's see what else we got. Broken lens, eh, aftermarket or replacement. No problem. Still got some bulbs in there. This thing spent some time in Kentucky. Uh, basically all the plastic pieces need some work here. And they make some really nice um, spray for coating those and bringing them back to life. Underneath, not too rusty, actually. You should see my Tundra if you want to see what rust is. Uh, so this one was actually pretty good shape. Spent most of its life in Florida. And this back door will need some work. Roof, a couple little dents, no big deal. Roof rack, doing okay. A little bent in in the middle. He said he used it for a work truck and had lumber and stuff up there all the time. And I think he might have had some paint inside, too, and a bunch of other stuff, which you'll see. Uh, other tire, wheel well, fine. The side's looking pretty good, just some scratches. Just can be buffed out, maybe a little bit of dent there. And the fender, you can work on that. Nothing pressing though, because I really, what I have to do is get this engine working or swap it out with something else. Same type is most likely what I'm gonna do. Some people have said you can't really rebuild these engines. Uh, I'm not sure why, maybe because the aluminum heads, and maybe it's not worth spending the money on the brand new heads when you could just buy a new engine for another thousand or more, whatever it takes. Aftermarket radio, steering wheel is all disgusting. Um, interior is, I already started taking out the interior as you can see, because the guy, like I said, pressure washed the inside, so I took the seats out to let them dry and um, I'll be taking out the whole vinyl floor and putting in some extra sound deadening. It reeks in this car, okay? It smells like mold is starting to form. So my first step is a really 
clean all that old cotton insulation that came stock. Need a little new seal there, no problem. And extra parts in the trunk. Some of these parts are ones that are center console that I took out so, so I could get cleaning. Let's jump around over here and check out this door. It kind of moves up when you close it and it latches in and then when you open it, it kind of falls down. So I don't know if the hinges um, need to be bent up a little bit or tightened, not sure. He put in a brake controller, he was doing some towing. Um, nice. Little dash storage and a little aftermarket, I believe. Um, fold down DVD player. Just looking at the headliner here, it's scratched up, but it's not bad. Uh, looking back here, if you want to remove the floor liner, that's how you do it. Basically, pull it up from there and just keep going forward and removing the front seats and go towards the front and removing trim and pulling it all up. Uh, you kind of have to rip it up because it's glued on and look at that soppy mess. Disgusting. Oh, that floor insulation, totally ruined. There's just no way it would ever dry out. Um, there's uh, little plugs in the floor you can take out. Look at that, there's standing water in there. Just never, never pressure wash the inside of your car. Jeez, such a bad idea. So much work just to clean it up. If you would have just left the interior, no matter how dirty it was, without doing that, it would have been way better for me to do the cleanup. But maybe you left the window down and some rain came in one day and kind of stunk it up. And so it was already halfway gone, who knows. But I'll, I'll seal everything with uh, that butyl sound dampening and fo adhesive foam you can get on Amazon. You can pull the center console up fairly easily. Has a couple bolts, a couple clips um, for all these plastic pieces in here. Just random stuff I found in here. Bunch of batteries, bunch of change, razor blades in the center console just falling down in, pens, pencils, anything you can imagine, um, any type of trash, toothpicks that would build up over the year. It was down in here. Even a little bottle of, um, a little squeeze bottle of, uh, like, lip balm, something like that. So, the, the parts do look a little rusty here, and now I'm going to remove the lower part of the center console. Do a couple bolts, and a couple in the back. It looks a little rusty, but I can get that surface rust off and, and throw some primer on. And they're all hidden anyways, so it's no big deal. Pop that baby out. Get a little bit better look at what's going on here. And I took out that center, the center console buttons as well. Look behind there. The cool thing is I only have one button on there. It's the rear diff lock, but all the other connectors are plugged in on the back into dummy switches. And so if you want to get those other accessories, your wiring's already there. Say the subwoofer or fog lights or whatever other buttons that are included. Okay, I want to show this rail by the door because it's the water even got into there and a little bit into that black plastic flex pipe for the harness. I'll just pull it up on this side so you can see how nasty it is over here as well. I'm pointing out some bolts here to take the um, lower seats out. And supposedly actually you can just flip them up and there's red uh, handles you can unscrew and take those out, but I took out the mounts and everything to get these out and To get those top seats out. There's um, You fold down the seats and then the very left and the very right attached to the hinges are two bolts that you pull up So look how disgusting that is. Ooh It is a lot of cleanup Pop these seats out just pull off four bolts 